What is the worst thing you did as a kid, and still feel guilty about? Stole a quartz rock from my grandmother. I had one very similar and was convinced it was mine and that I had left it there. She told me it wasn't mine, gave me a hug and a kiss. And, as a six year old, I just fixated that it was mine. And I'm 99% sure it wasn't. Nothing is ever 100% but yet. My grandmother, who did nothing but love me and shower me with love, affection, and attention, did not deserve to get her knickknacks stolen by me. By the time I was a teenager, it totally ate me up. I never confessed and I wished I had. After she died, I had a dream where she came back to see me and the first thing I did was cry and apologize. I bought a car at 15 and when my parents were out, I'd drive to a gas station nearby, get an energy drink, and drive back. I probably went on 20 or so joyrides over that year. They never found out and I never got pulled over, but I still wonder what would have happened had I been caught. Edit, seems like there's some confusion from folks who may not be located in the US. At 15 in most states, you can get a learner's permit, which allows you to drive with an adult. You have the permit for a year, learn to drive with that, and then you get your driver's license at 16. So at this point, I had already been driving on roads for a few months with my dad. He had also taught me to drive a stick shift at an earlier age, so I knew what I was doing. As for the car itself, I bought it off of Craigslist, basically an online yard sale. I paid for it with cash that I got from my bar mitzvah when I was 13. It was an 84 Nissan 200SX, and this was in 2009 or so, so it was not an expensive car at all. I have a mentally ill family member and as a kid I could never make sense of it or why my parents weren't doing more. It was difficult to deal with and I remember one day when I was like 7 8 years old I blamed my mom for it, raised my voice at her and everything. Almost 15 years down the line I still feel very guilty about it. I don't remember exactly what I said but I can very clearly remember the look on my mom's face. When I was 13 and my brother was 16 I was playing around with matches when our parents weren't home, and accidentally started a small fire. Thankfully we put it out quickly, but some damage was done. When our mother came home, she was very angry and asked who did it. I was scared of being buck ragged, common punishment at the time, so I lied and said he did it, he said I did it, but my mom believed me and punished him. I was relieved at first, but I felt really guilty seeing him out in the yard, gagging into a buck rag, from the safety of the house. Road shit like I hate you. You're the worst mummy ever and I hope you die. Have a terrible day etc all over my birthday card to my mum because she said I couldn't go out to play on my bike before we went out for dinner. She died a month later from a sudden brain aneurysm. Eight year old me knew it wasn't my fault and I hadn't meant what I'd said in a temper but I felt bad for wishing it on her all the same and cursed the horrible timing. I feel sad that we never got the chance to talk about it as adults and laugh about it together. I stole from a friend of mine. A while back Burger King had a line of toys with its meals and one of the toys was a wallet. I do not remember what the branding was, but I remember it being really really cool. So one day I'm visiting a friend of mine and I see in his room that he has the wallet. 
I was insanely jealous so when he wasn't looking I took everything out of it, hid the contents around his room, and pocketed the wallet. I then spent the rest of the day hanging out and playing and at the end of the day left with my new prize. My siblings and I called the only other kid at our bus stop Picklehead because he always wore a green beanie. We were relentless, too, and teased the fuck out of him. One day he tried wearing a different beanie, red one, and we ramped things up calling him Tomato Head. It's been almost two decades and I still don't know what the poor kid's actual name was. A poor large Irish family on my street gave one of their sons a black Trans Am model car as his only present at Christmas. They told him it was from Knight Rider, his favorite show. It wasn't, but it was a cool model. Not a small one, but a decent sized effort with opening doors and the like. A good present basically. We, although mainly me, then told him, on Christmas Day, it wasn't Knight Rider. He was really young, like 7, while we were about 12. He got upset and insisted it was Knight Rider. We then told him to prove it. By throwing it, a lot, at the floor, wall etc. Knight Rider was bulletproof so it shouldn't get damaged. In the end the model was scratched, dented, and doors and wheels were either hanging on by a thread or had fallen off. He was dead upset, and his family gave him hell. Always cringe and feel terrible for being a git at the time. I wasn't really a nasty kid but that was one time I deeply regretted being a bit of a shit just to get giggles from my friends. In grade school I called the school custodians a whore. She's the sweetest lady and every student consider her a firand. I didn't know what that word mean. I said it out loud during lunch in front of everyone. Kids started to chant. She cried. I got sent to the principal office. I felt so bad seeing a nice lady cry in front of us. When I was 8 I studiously watched how my dad filled out checks. So, when the moment struck, I stole a check from my parents' checkbook, crossed off their names and wrote mine, wrote it out for $80 to Lego, signed my name, and fired it off in the mail with the order form for a giant Lego semi-complete with Warthog fighter plane. I forgot all about it until a few weeks later it actually showed up. What's astounding is that they not only accepted this totally fraudulent check, but mailed the item off. Of course my parents were furious. My mom found out when the bank called, laughing. So what did she do? She contacted the police and staged things took me down there and scared the shit out of me. They talked to me about stuff like JV, theft. Then my mom took me to meet the bank manager and I learned about fraud and how it could put me in prison. What's killer is that Lego customer service tried to laugh it off, but they refunded my mom obviously. But holy hell, the worst part was my dad and mom, for the next four months, two years, would frisk me in checkout lines. It was pretty extreme but will, I'm no thief and I now work in the fraud department at a bank. I was playing a game of tag with my cousins. My mom said I was being too rough and forced me to sit on the side and watch. I sat with my back against the wall and my legs outstretched. One of cousins was running towards my legs, and when he attempted to dodge them, I raised my knees, tripping him and making him fly through the air. He ended up with a bloody nose and a few stitches. He did nothing wrong. 
It's still one of the worst things I've done in my life. I took a dump into any kind of box I could find and I would leave it on the next door neighbor's porch. Shoe boxes, cereal boxes, etc. I did this probably three dozen times. I would watch the house next door and make sure the neighbor left. Then I would watch for another 15 minutes to make sure they weren't just faking me out. Then I would sneak up and leave the box. I did actually catch them driving away and then slowly creeping back to park on the street nearby to watch if anyone puts a box on their porch. They even went door to door asking around, obviously my parents said they doubt it could have been me. I had no reason to do this. It just occurred to me one day that I could do this, so I decided to do it. It wasn't even for a laugh, it was just a mission for me to accomplish. Nobody ever found out. In middle school, my friends, and I cut the heads off of a bouquet of roses that our Spanish teacher's husband had delivered for her. She had stepped out for a second before class and we just, destroyed the whole bouquet. She had an absolute breakdown over it. I'm a teacher now, and, I'd like to think, a better person. What we did was just stupid and mean. I also feel bad for how we all treated Mr. Pitts. He was an okay guy and we bullied the crap out of him. I hope my students never treat me the way we treated some of our teachers. It's small and stupid but measured by guilt the worst happened when I was like 8, so in like the early 2000s. My older cousin, who was babysitting me, made me mad by making me follow the rules, no soda before dinner. So I went outside and was sitting in the grass looking for four leaf clovers. He came out and asked what I was doing, trying to reconcile with me despite the fact that I was being a little shit. Me, looking for four leaf clovers. Him, jokingly, well just look for the greenest one, you may have more luck over where the dogs pee. Me. Maybe I should check your hair it looks like no one told you it was green even though you're color blind. My cousin, who at 16 was already 6 feet 2 inches, wore all black most of the time to get around his color blindness and in general leaned into the goth look he's always been a big fan of ICP for reference. However, he had decided to bleach his hair a few days earlier and it had left his hair this bleach y green color that I knew he was self-conscious about he was literally babysitting me so my mom would give him a few bucks to buy a toner for it. For a half a second, while I scowled at him from the grass, a flash of hurt, then anger, then sadness went over his face. He said good luck then and went back inside. Guilt washed over me. I instantly felt like human trash and when I did find a four-leaf clover some 30 minutes later I gave it to him and apologized. He gave me a very minor scolding about teasing people over things they couldn't control, his color blindness, and then accepted the four-leaf clover and gave me a hug. A few days later he showed back up to the house with his hair recolored instead of dyeing it black or toning it blonde he leaned into the green and his hair was now nuclear green. I can honestly say it was a formative experience for me and led to me being the chaotic good individual I am these days. It definitely shaped how I deal with my nieces and nephews. Stealing from my parents' wallets. I was very young and I don't think I had yet to understand the value of money yet, as it was was somewhat big values. It happened a few times that I took what would be equal to a $50 bill. I have no idea why I did it but I did stop once I was caught. 
The only purchase I remember was buying a tabletop game, the cashier asked if I was allowed to use such an amount of money and right after my purchase my mom did show up as I was struggling with the bag and I'll never forget the facial expression of the cashier as she starred. I was caught like a day after or something but I'm pretty sure they must have known for a while. I still feel incredible guilty for this, yet it hurts even more as a grown up hearing stories how my parents had saved money for a couple years only to be able to buy a garden hose, but had to wait and save for it due to priorities. I used to hang out with my neighbor's kid a lot growing up. He was extremely spoiled and always had the newest games so I would go over there and spend hours playing games at his house. However, with privilege came a lot of shitty behavior and he was quite the dick at times. To give an example, sometimes he would just make me and other kids in the neighborhood sit and watch him play games or even hit or throw the controller at us when he lost. Whenever he would start to play games by himself I would go snoop around his house since his parents would be gone most of the day. I found a drawer where they would always have a fat stack of $100 bills laying around. I began with just taking one bill every week or so. This went on for a month or two and I ended up stealing at least $10,000 worth of cash. I don't think they ever noticed but looking back now I did it in a sort of vengeance towards the kid when the parents were nothing but nice to me. I'd like to one day leave an envelope at the doorstep repaying them even though it went unnoticed. When I was probably 10, a kid named Brandon on my street lost his dad in a car accident. His dad was an alcoholic and went driving late one night and never came back until police knocked on their door. The kid was obviously fucked up after that for a few years. He would sometimes play with me and the other kids on our street but it always bummed everyone out when he was around. He was always depressed and awkward to be around. One day after a sports event our parents offered to take everyone out for ice cream, including Brandon. Being a shitty kid I went and asked Brandon's mom if she could take him home because he would ruin the good mood. His mom cried. I'd rate that the shittiest thing I've ever done in my life. I moved away and never met that family again but I heard Brandon got into drugs as a teenager and fucked his life up. Maybe one of these days I'll go to his old house and try to find him. Sadly I live thousands of miles from there and it's been over 20 years. I pushed and assaulted verbally and physically a girl who just wanted to be my friend. I didn't punch her or make her bleed or bruise but I shoved her hard and was incredibly mean and she was just being a nice person and friend. We were 9. I'm 39 now. It's haunted me how cruel I was. I think about it with regret often. It was because she was very poor, I was too but not like her family and my mom would spend extra time with her and do things like big. I was jealous of my mom's affection. I had three brothers so her attention was already very divided. I'm sorry Evelyn. You deserved a friend. I had great respect for the law and was often afraid that I will do something wrong and get arrested. I flipped out when somebody dropped trash or when my parents tried to fake my age form 7 to 6 to get a discount or tried to do something illegal. But one day, a friend showed me how coins can be flattened when you put them on the rail and wait till the train comes. She had some of these flattened coins and they looked super cool. I was very nervous about it, but I didn't want to appear to be a coward because she was a cool kid, so I waited with her for the train. 
but when the train came there was a sudden loud bang and the conductor got out of the train to see if something is blocking the rail, it in the train station. Suddenly I realized that the train could have derailed because of these coins and this could have ended very badly. The train continued and my friend took her coin off the rail as nothing has happened. But I was in terror for the next months, that the police will find out who did this and arrest me and my family.